video. What's good? It's your boy Zell Jackson back with another video, baby. Let's go. Yeah. So today we're gonna get right into it. Um, we're reacting to a video called "An American Tourist Sail to the Sentinels," and it did not end well. And it's by Sunny V Two, and it is very interesting. So. If you want to see more, go ahead and comment down below, like, and subscribe, and all that good stuff, you know. Let's get right into the video. I hate that I don't have this prepared. Jesus Christ. Alright, there we go. On the 15th of November 2018, John Allen Chow took a boat to North Sentinel Island expecting a peaceful welcome. He never made it back home. Although before we talk about who he was, what he was doing, and how he came to meet his fate. Let's first talk about the island that? itself. Located in the Bay of Bengal between India and Thailand, North Sentinel hmm. Island measures 6 kilometers wide, 8 kilometers long, and is home to one of the last uncontacted tribes on all of planet Earth. The tribe is known to outsiders as the Sentinelese, who have an estimated population of between 15 and 500 people. However, there's a reason why taking an accurate measurement is almost impossible. They're unbelievably hostile to anybody who tries to visit the island. The first example of this came in in 1867 when an Indian merchant ship wrecked on the island's reef, and while the 106 passengers might have thought that they'd stumbled upon paradise, this couldn't have been further from the truth. Without warning, the ship's crew were attacked by the tribe's bow and arrows, and were only able to survive by returning fire with sticks and stones found on the beach. They were rescued by a British steamboat one week later, yet the captain of the shipwreck went on to describe the Sentinelese by writing, The savages were perfectly naked with short hair and red painted noses, and were opening their mouth and making sounds like like part on off. Their arrows appeared to be tipped with iron. The intriguing nature of the tribe led a party of armed British officials to return 13 years later in 1880, at which point mm. they'd find quote a network of pathways and several small villages that looked to have been freshly abandoned. They'd eventually find four Sentinelese children, as well as an elderly couple, who were kidnapped by the party and taken back to the nearby city of Port Blair. However, their stay didn't last very long as all six Sentinelese sickened rapidly and the old man and his wife died so the four children were sent back to their home with quantities of presents. 16 years after this, a Hindu convict That sounds very suspicious, bro. They rapidly got sick after being captured and taken to a whole different country. Nah. Nah, bro. Then you sent the kids back, bro? Nah. Nah, I can't. I can't. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 Because that's just going to make them more hostile. It's going to make them want to either one, try to evade one of these other countries that are small as fuck and don't know what the fuck they're doing. Or two, they're going to evade. There's, there's no, there's only, there's only really one option. They're going to evade, <laughs> or they're going to gather more, recruit more, and then yeah, nah, I'm good. Nope. I didn't know that there was actually a species of humans that are like that though. Just to be that violent towards anybody, he said that it, it, they don't have a correct estimate because they're so unreasonably hostile to everyone. No, I'm good. I'm good. Escaped on a makeshift raft from the adjacent Great Andaman Island, only to wash up 50 kilometers west in the worst place imaginable, North Sentinel. A search party found his body lying on the beach pierced with iron arrows, with his death sending a clear enough message for nobody to return to the island for almost 80 years. However, in 1974, a film crew shooting a documentary called Man in Search of Man landed on the island to leave gifts. We came at last to what is known as the North Sentinel Island. Although some expeditions had landed here, the Sentinelese had never been sighted. We left gifts of coconuts, knives, lengths of cloth, 
a pig. After which the Sentinelese were caught on camera for the very first time. What are those moving shapes? Are they humans? Nah, that's black as fuck. I mean, I'm dark. I bet the, I have this light. Wait, I bet you if I turn off this light right now, you just see straight black. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Look, if I turn off this light, you're not even gonna see what's behind, behind in my room. Yeah, yeah. I'm dark. Okay, dark. But. Let's be honest. Looking at this, this looks like charcoal, bro. <laughs> I know. I know the door. I know. I know. Yep. Yeah, I'm going. Yep. But am I wrong, though? Am I wrong? <laughs> okay. Whatever. At last, the first glimpse of the Sentinelese. This tribe believes in total. But wow, that is dark. Total isolation. They're as black as this right here, bro. Whatever. <laughs> it will not tolerate the stranger. As is obvious in the footage, the tribe had no interest in making friends and rather buried half of the gifts they'd been given before shooting arrows toward the film crew. A member of our film unit was wounded by one of the many arrows, each two and a half meters long. He will carry this scar till his death. If on Google Maps you zoom into the coastline on the island's northwest corner, <laughs> you'll find a different boat which now acts as a permanent reminder of North Sentinel's hostility and unrecoverability. The ship going by the name of the MV Primrose had been transporting farming supplies to Australia before it wrecked on the unfortunate location in 1981. The ship's passengers were incredibly lucky because at the time, this entire area was underwater, keeping them at a safe distance while they organized their rescue. In the meantime, the Sentinelese observed the ship from their beach, with the crew members describing the tribe as well-built, frizzy-haired, and black. They were naked except for narrow belts that circled their waists, and they were holding spears, bows, and arrows, which they had begun waving in a manner that seemed not altogether friendly. However, while almost every example so far displays the Sentinelese as an untouchable group of brutes, it would be exactly 10 years later when a single anthropologist did the impossible. He made peaceful contact for the very first time. T and Pandit had been dropping gifts and coconuts to the island every one or two first time. That's crazy. Honestly, I hope my YouTube algorithm or like the, the YouTube, the way I pull out my uh, my thumbnails, I hope that this would be my thumbnail because, you know, it looks very wholesome, very nice, you know, very nice. But, uh, yeah, glad this guy made contact with these guys, with these, with these young men, um, peacefully, yeah, peacefully. Peaceful contact. T and Pandit had been dropping gifts and coconuts to the island every one or two months since 1967, although for the first 24 years of doing so, the Sentinelese maintained their hostility. But all of this changed on the 4th of January 1991, when the tribe finally concluded that he was only there to help. Pandit described this day in a 2000 interview with the American Scholar, which stated a great many of the Sentinelese started running down the beach and splashing through the surf toward the dinghy. The director leapt from the boat into chest high water. One of the young Sentinelese men recalled in fright and handed coconuts to the tribesmen as they crowded around him. A few weeks later, he returned to North Sentinel with another expedition. This time, several Sentinelese men went so far as to climb into the dinghy and grab entire sacks of coconuts. Panda was alone in the water with a group of Sentinelese. One of the young tribesmen looked at him, scowled, pulled out an iron-bladed knife, and made a gesture, Pandit says, like he was going to cut out my heart. Maybe he thought I was planning to stay on the island. But the dinghy quickly 
return to pick Pandit up. He would return to North Sentinel several more times before retiring from the Anthropological Survey in 1992. The interaction showed that peaceful contact with the tribe was possible, although only after a significant period of trust building, and even after T and Pandit's unique interaction, the Sentinelese retained their hostility toward any unfamiliar outsider. For example, after the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake caused the worst tsunami in recorded human history right next to North Sentinel Island, a helicopter was sent out to see if the tribe had survived from such a catastrophic event. Well, not only were the Sentinelese somehow doing just fine, but their response to the help offered by the Indian government was to throw spears, arrows and rocks toward the helicopter. Two years later in 2006, two men aged 48 and 52 were fishing for mud crabs near the island. However, the pair... <laughs> you know, I do want to travel the world. <laughs> I do want to travel the world, right? I want to go to first stop, first stop, first stop. Japan. I do want to go to Japan. That's number one. I do want to go to Japan. Actually, low-key, I want to live in Japan for about a year. For about a year, just live in Japan. A year, year and a half, maybe two years, just living in Japan. Uh, I want to go to... I want to France, of course, since everybody wants to go to... want to go to Paris. I want to go to Paris. Show my girlfriend the Eiffel Tower, or wife, whatever she is at the time. I'm going to show her the Eiffel Tower, take her up to the top, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, I want to go to Rome, see the Colosseum, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And uh, what else? I don't want to go nowhere cold, cold. Oh, I want to go to Jamaica, of course. I want to go to Jamaica and I want to go to Brazil. Those are the places I really want to go. Those are the places I want to travel to. Now, there's a couple other places where I just will not go. Serbia, I will never go. I'll go to Africa. Mm -hmm. I'll go to South Africa. I will go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But I will not go to Saudi Arabia. I will not go to Madagascar. Nope. Mainly because of the cockroaches. I would not go to there. They're like that big and they hiss at you. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Nope. Nope. No, I'm good. Mm -mm. They hiss at you and they're, they're literally called the hissing cockroaches. No, I'm good. Thank you. Keep that over there. Pear got so drunk that while sleeping, the anchor of the boat, which was a rock tied to a rope, fell apart and drifted the men toward North Sentinel. The following morning, fellow fishermen said they tried to shout at the men and warn them that they were in danger. However, they did not respond. They were probably drunk, and the boat drifted into the shallows where they were attacked and killed. A government helicopter was sent to recover the bodies. However, given the tribe's hostility, all they were able to get was this photo, after which a fight. Okay, I think they ate him. I think they, they, uh, they killed them and they dragged the bodies to their village, to their village. They dragged the bodies to their village and they, uh, they split them up accordingly. Yeah. And there's no way. 5.6 kilometer exclusion zone was enforced by the Indian government, making it illegal for anybody to visit the island. This, in combination with every other example so far, paints a very simple picture. Do not visit North Sentinel Island under any circumstances. However, unfortunately, John Allen Chow never got the message. Born on the 18th of December 1991 in the state of Alabama, John grew up in what seemed to be a standard Christian household with two parents and two siblings. As he got older, John began to get into to various outdoor activities such as camping, hiking, and kayaking, which when combined with his religious background, inspired him to become an adventure blogger and Christian missionary. On his Insta- No, fuck it. Mount Everest, bro. Why the fuck would I want to go up on Mount Everest? No. 
I'm already afraid of heights. Which is crazy. I'm afraid of heights, but only uncontrolled heights I'm afraid of. Like trees, tall bridges, uh, mountains, of course. I don't like that. I don't like heights. But planes, buildings, stuff where I know that I'm safe. I'm good. Mm -hmm. If I see that I have a increased chance of falling off by myself and falling over the ledge and then splatting onto the cement or whatever ground or whatever whatever is beneath me, uh yeah, no, it's not that's not for me at all. Nope. I'm good. Instagram, John displayed his trips to countless different countries, including Mexico, South Africa, and Canada, each of which being documented on his Rugged Trail website. However, there was one location that John had his sights set on, which would make all the others seem insignificant, North Sentinel. He'd grown obsessed with the idea of visiting the island during his previous trip to the Andamans in 2016, and judging from the quotes he posted to his Facebook, John seemed to have been inspired by another missionary named Jim Elliott, who was killed in the 50s whilst preaching to a native tribe in Ecuador. Although so you want to get killed too is what I'm hearing. So you basically got what you wanted. You wanted to die. Pre I don't think you got a word out, but you wanted to die, basically. Went to go visit visit a spot where yeah no no I, I haven't he just wanted to know. According to the head of the mission he was working for, John was significantly more prepared. All Chow's decisions, including his studies of sports science and training and working as a wilderness emergency medical technician, and classes he took in linguistics and cultural anthropology, were in preparation to share Jesus with the North Sentinelese. He was very well prepared for this moment. On the 21st of October 2018, John posted this image to social media, showing that he was back in the nearby city of Port Blair, where unbeknown to his family, he was planning his trip to what he called Satan's Last Stronghold, aka North Sentinel Island. On the 15th of November 2018, only 25 days after landing back in the Andamans, John began a journal to document his trip to North Sentinel, with his first entry state- mm. You know it's close, but it's probably just like that. Haiti, why don't you just go to Haiti and help? Be like all the other activists and researchers go to Haiti, help out the people in Haiti, and then right next to Haiti, there's Dominican Republic. So you can see literal heaven and hell. You can literally see heaven and hell right there, bro. Haiti is obviously hell, and then Dominican Republic, like. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. It's the same island. It's just split up in two different areas. Well, you would go to an uninhabited place. Well, it's habited, but the most dangerous place in the world at the moment. North Sentinel Island. Well, they say North Sentinel. I'm thinking about like, what if there's a South Sentinel? But even if it's South Sentinel, I think it'll be still dangerous. <laughs> I low-key want to read this, but my dyslexia is already messed up. <laughs> this man's, like, handwriting gets worse and worse. It's not like there's any lines where I can just... I'll try my best. I'll try my best. November 14, 2018. Yeah, I already... No. Nope. 
Bloss. Stating Bloss. that a group of fishermen had agreed to take him to the island illegally. I met last night with the fishermen who are all believers and agreed to drop me off. Jonathan won't be accompanying me as they will be at sea doing their regular <laughs> fishing maneuvers to avoid raising suspicion and there is a high chance that they'd get checked by the Indian Coast Guard. The meeting went well. I trust them though I'm the only English speaker so there's quite a language gap and I'm relying on the Holy Spirit to direct us. The drop zone was pointed out on the map as being a cove on the southwest of the island and I depart in three or so hours. God, I thank you- Dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Literally, you're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot. No. Like, I have nothing, I have nothing else to say, but this dude's an idiot. Like, this is the biggest dumbass I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a lot of dumbasses. I'm 21 years old. I've seen a lot of dumbasses so far. Like, this dude is really dumb. You know... I learned to mind my own business. There's gonna be some times where you do illegal things and actual legal things, right? Yeah, there's gonna be some things like you do legally and not illegally. But when there's a wide majority of the area that is literally protected by a whole different country I think that you should uh, not go there he literally set up a fucking scheme to go to the island you literally just got your shit waxed Thank you for choosing me before I was even formed in my mother's womb to be your messenger for your great <laughs> news to the people of North Sentinel Island. John then explained his plan for first contact by stating, the plan is to link up with the crew tonight and depart tonight, arriving at the shore around 4am. From there, we make progressive contact with fish as gifts over the next few days and then send me off. We might even send a kayak laden with gifts towards shore. The following day, John explained that his trip to the island went as planned by writing, at 4.30 we entered the cove on the west and shore, which was followed by his first attempt at contact approximately four hours later. Around 8.30, I got two large fish, around 15 pounds it felt like. I put them on top of the kayak and began rowing. Two armed sentinelese came rushing out yelling at me. They had two arrows each unstrung until they got closer. I hollered, my name is John. I love you and Jesus loves you. Jesus Christ gave me the authority to come to you. I regret I began to panic slightly as I saw them string arrows in their bows. I picked up the half tuna and threw it toward them. They kept coming. I back paddled facing them and then when they got the fish, I turned and paddled like I never have in my life back to the boat. I felt some fear but mainly was disappointed they didn't accept me right away. I can now say I've been nearly shot by the same Oh my gosh, bro. Hold on. Let me read this again. I'm going to read it. I regret. I began. I began to. I regret. I began to panic slightly as I saw them stringing arrows in their bows. I picked up the half tuna and threw it towards them. They kept calm. They kept coming. I backpedaled facing them, and then when they got the fish, I turned the pet. I turned and paddled like I never have in my life, back to the boat. I felt some fear, but mainly was disappointed they didn't accept me right away.
You entitled <laughs> That motherfucker is so entitled, bro. What? I'm disappointed they didn't accept me right away. They probably didn't speak the same language as you. And yet... Oh my god. Well, we can go ahead and say it together, you guys. Uh, I think this one is warranted, even though this dude is not technically that. But uh, that right there is some white people shit. And there's, there's no going back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe that that's warranted, bro. Sentinelese, and I've walked on and cached gear on their island. Now I'm resting on the boat and will try again later. John escaped his first encounter unharmed. However, as mentioned in the previous entry, he planned on returning for a second encounter, which miraculously he'd survive once again. I waited my kayak toward the hut I'd been chased from on initial contact. Sure enough, as I got there, I heard the whoops and shouts from the hut. I made sure to stay out of arrow range, but unfortunately that meant I was also out of good hearing range. So I got a little closer and as that they, about six from what I could see, yelled at me. I tried to parrot their words back to them. They burst out laughing most of the time, so they probably were saying bad words or insulting me. I yelled some phrases and sang them some worship songs and hymns, and they would often fall silent after this. Here's when this nice meet and greet went south. A child and a young woman, both with bows, came behind, and I kept waving my hands to say no bows, but they didn't get the memo, I guess. Then a little kid with bow and arrow came down the middle, and I figured this was it. So I preached a bit to them starting in general, Genesis, and disembark my kayak to show them that I too have two legs. But the little kid shot me with an arrow directly into my Bible which I was holding in front of my chest. I stumbled back and I recall yelling at the kid for shooting me. I had to swim almost a mile back to the boat at the mouth of the cove. The plan now is to rest and sleep on the boat. By this point John already had an unbelievable story for the ages. He had gone to the island so- Alright, you know, that's where you get it in dip, bro. That's that- you literally got shot at by one of them. Well, they didn't have the gap, but they had a bow and arrow. And they... Where? I got a Bible. I got a Bible. I'll show you how thick a Bible actually is. Look, this, this, is, a, this is a Bible, right? This is a Bible. See how thick that is? That's that's pretty thick. It's about that that big. That that big. It probably wait. He was probably holding like this, right? Holding it somewhat like this, right? And he shot the arrow it's on his chest. The heart is like somewhere around here, right? He's probably like right here. I'll say arrow probably right here, right? Like, like right there. It's probably like went through right there. Actually, it went through like halfway through. It penetrated halfway through and he took the arrow with him. Like, thank you. If you... But like, right right there. It probably stopped like right there. In that little gap. You see my, the gap in my fingers? I, I should probably really stop that. Bro. I think that this dude is a dumbass. Are you sure that you're not white? I mean, your name is not white, but it's definitely some white people shit, bro. And very entitled. And very stupid to keep persisting to go do this. It's like sliding on the ops and then not not thinking that the ops are going to shoot at you if you're nice for being nice it's like sliding on the ops but, this, but you're thinking the ops not going to shoot at you if you be nice it's like going to Chicago and then going to the going to group with uh fucking 
going to 64th to 65th Street, and you from 63rd Street, and you say fuck 63rd to the ops, they laugh, they giggle, and then you keep on saying it, fuck 63rd, fuck 63rd, and then, you know, some of them are not even going to get it, but they they going to realize that you from 63rd, and then they going to still shoot at you. You survive, but you go back. Not everybody know your face. You can say, fuck 63rd, but you from 63rd. Now you got both gangs after your head. But it doesn't it doesn't matter because fucking 64th to 65th is going to gun you down in the first place. You ain't surviving in this next one. Why you keep on going? Chill out. Chill out. You need to stop survived his first day, returned on a second day, was shot by the Sentinelese point blank but lived to tell the tale after the pages in his bible decided to spare his life. However, as the journal entries continued, it became obvious that John was happy for his legacy to be the guy who died trying to preach his religion to the tribe. Lord, let your will be done. If you want me to get actually shot or even killed with an arrow, then so be it. I think I could be more useful alive though, but to you, God, I give all the glory of whatever happens. I don't want to die would it be wiser to leave and let someone else continue no i don't think so i still go yes 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 it would be wiser look you probably had a family back at home girlfriend maybe a wife maybe a kid or two friends, mother, father, grandma, grandpa, if they're still alive. But you had people that cared about you at home. I mean, I'm all for, you know, sharing your religion. But I'm only going, like me, I only share my religion if uh, people actually show interest in it. Like, I've already said it, but I was dating someone, and I told her that I'm a Christian, and she was like, I don't go to church, and I said, it's all right, even though that we're together, I'm not going to push you to try to commit to being a Christian or whatever, but if you do ever decide that you want to go to church or you want to learn more about it, then it's always open. I'm always open to let you come. But this is where my time is. This is what my time is. Like, right? This is what I put my time in. At cert on certain days and certain hours. This is what I put my time in. And, you know, it's respectable. I, I don't... Because you can't force something on somebody. They're just going to resent it more. So... I mean, yeah, but to say that if somebody else would teach, they wouldn't even let the other person go in. They barely let one dude go in, and that was because he was actually trying to help them. And it took them about like 25-ish years, right? 25 years? Somewhere around 25 years? Let's say a range from 10 to 25. From 10 to 25 years. And you expect to. Take that 10 to 25 years. And change it to. Three days. Three days. Three days. You expect to change. Three days bro. You think you're not but it. Nah you're tripping. You're we'll make it back to the US somehow, as it almost seems like certain death to stay here. Yet there is evidence of change in just two encounters in a single day. We'll try again tomorrow. The following day, John wrote his final entry in the journal, beginning with, Woke up after a fairly restless sleep. Heading to Ireland now. I hope this isn't my last notes, but if it is, to God be the glory. Before going on to write a goodbye message to his family, reading, Brian and Marilyn and mum and dad. You guys might think I'm crazy in all of this, but I think it's worth it to declare Jesus. 
Jesus to these people. Please not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Rather, please live your lives in obedience to whatever he calls you to, and I'll see you again when you pass through the veil. Don't retrieve my body. I love you all, and I pray that none of you love anything in this world more than Jesus Christ. Written from the cove on the southwest-ish, more like west of North Sentinel Island. 16th of November, 2018, 6.20 a.m. In the days that followed, his family made a post to John's Instagram reading, we recently learned from an unconfirmed report that John Allen Chow was reported killed in India while reaching out to members of the Sentinelese tribe in the Andaman Islands. Words cannot express the sadness we have experienced about this report. He was a beloved son, brother, uncle, and best friend to us. To others, he was a Christian missionary, a wilderness EMT, an international soccer coach, and a mountaineer. He loved God, life, helping those in need, and had nothing but love for the Sentinelese people. As a family, we ask for your understanding and respect for him and us during this time. Thank you, the Chow family. Three months later, John's father criticized religion for the death of his son, stating, If you have anything positive to say about religion, I wish not to see or hear it. John is gone because the Western ideology overpowered my Confucian influence. He blamed evangelicals' extreme Christianity for pushing his child to a not unexpected end, which is a viewpoint often repeated across social media platforms. John Allen Chow is not a martyr, just a dumb American who thought that tribals needed Jesus when the tribals already lived in harmony with God and nature for years without outside interference. Stupidity cannot be considered to be a martyrdom. On the 15th of... Well, couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better. Could not have said it better. Yeah, people are so stupid sometimes. I don't understand. I don't understand humanity sometimes. Oh, these people are so endangered. Oh, these people are so... Yada, yada, yada. We need to help them. We need to help them. We need to help them. I'm all for helping. I do help. I do help. Don't, don't, don't confuse me with that. I do help. I do like helping. I love it. It warms my heart and my soul. But like, there, there is a point in time where <laughs> it's not going to work as well. But, yep. I guess he got what he wanted. So, with that said, you guys, it's been your boys of the Jackson. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Hopefully, this doesn't give you nightmares. Because, uh, yeah, it's time for me to go to sleep and get ready for tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace. Hey, make sure y'all stay safe. And stay good because where I'm at, we got wildfire warnings. Just stay safe. Peace. For reals.